The last time Safari was here on our stage, the love and hip hop star expressed a desire to be a father. Energy, energy, energy. But wants his kids to be born and raised in Jamaica. Soon to be married, Safari is now in Jamaica with his new love. Could a child be on the way? Safari is here to answer as well as to drop his latest music project. I wanna come and give my queen love. Lifetime achievement honors for Muta Baruka, the legendary dub poet and media personality, will be here and we'll ask him to give his views on a number of topical issues, including ganja, politics, Buju Banton and more. People try to come into the yard. Nine years after his first feature film, Storm Salter's multiple award-winning follow-up picture sprinter finally played to a home crowd this week to rave reviews. Storm comes to our stage to talk the movie. UK-based producers, Fanatics, best known in the reggae dancehall space as producers of Style OG's hit Touchdown, featuring Nicki Minaj and Vibes Cartel, are on our stage this week. All coming up right here on our stage, but I'd like to take time out at this point to send our condolences to the family and friends of two we have lost this week. In music, Bo P one of music's most pleasant talents, and Doreen Samuels, beloved broadcaster, who we lost this week after a bout with cancer. We'll be right back. Reaching more and more screens around the world every week on stage. So much more than entertainment. The International Reggae and World Music Awards returns to Jamaica. Here's our story. With the success story of Buja Banton's Long Walk to Freedom concert now behind us, the promoters of the International Reggae and World Music Awards are promising another windfall moment for Jamaica in May with the 37th staging of the Iramas. Shaggy, Sean Paul and Coffee all tie for four nominations each in major categories, while a host of other stalwarts in the business will receive special honors. Among them, the I3, Tony Rebel, Muta Baruka, Barris Hammond, Joseph Bogdanovich and on stage his own, Winford Williams. For a full list of the 2018 nominees, you can go to irama.com. The event, which will be hosted for the fourth time in Jamaica, will be held at the Jamaica Pegasus in Kingston on May 11. The nominee's announcement was made at the Pegasus on Tuesday, March 19. Nine years after his first feature film, people try to come into the yard. Storm Salter's multiple award-winning follow-up picture, Sprinter, Mama. finally played to a home crowd this week to rave reviews. Storm comes to our stage to talk the movie right now. Storm, sir. Hey. Blessed love, Respect sir. Queen Good to have you. Congrats. Thank you. Enough of that. Yeah, man. This, to me, was... Not because I'm in it. By the way, I'm in it. <laughs> it's my debut, fans. It is true that it is a very inspiring movie, powerful, and is worth every, every cent to go and see it. And every Jamaican everywhere will be proud of this, and everyone who watches it will be inspired, regardless of your nationality mm -hmm. or your culture. Mm -hmm. That's my take on it, sir. Mm -hmm. So again, congratulations, and go in and Thank talk you. to us about your own feedback from the, the premiere last night. Why, you know, it, showing the film to a Jamaican crowd, but also to the amazing Jamaican crew who made the film, um, and the amazing cast, uh, and then other cultural ambassadors. I mean, for me, it's always an honor when the film goes to places and places audiences all over and when they love it or when we are awarded, it means so much. Yes. But you don't know, is, is a film yes. by us about us and, and when you're in that space oh, and yes. the people who sweated for it. So it feels great. Like it was kind of like a rush of, of emotions, but in, but in the aftermath, it was very positive. No, but you would have been getting a, um, in throat because yeah. people were screaming and clapping yeah, yeah, in the, yeah. while the film was going on. To talk about some of the awards you came in with under your belt. Yeah, well, um, Sprinter premiered at the 2018 American Black Film Festival and 
we walked away with, with the best narrative feature, the audience award, and the best director award. Wow. So that was the first festival that we did. Mm -hmm. So we came out the gate like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> kicking, you know? And then we went on from there to the Bahamas International Fil Film Festival, won the New Vision Award. We went at the, to the Pan-African Film Festival in Los Angeles and won the Best Narrative Feature Award again. Um, we recently won the Best Feature Film Award at the Nouveau Regard Film Festival in Guadeloupe. And uh, we showed at the Smithsonian Museum in Washington, yes. D.C. at their inaugural festival. Now the film just has this momentum that it's bubbling with now that now we're getting invited to all these places. You know, we, we did a screening in London the other day and we screened Sprinter in London, Toronto and LA all within 24 hours, so three countries, and they were all sold out. And I think at that moment we were like, okay, something, something will go on. Yes. What's driving it, Storm? What do you think is the I mean, you the can, allure? film is art for the masses, right? Yes. So you have to find a way to get people to commit to sitting there and watching it. And it's marketing and these types of things. Mm -hmm. Story is about Jamaicans, first of all. Yes. So there's that just interest in the culture. Then track and feel of which we have been so dominant. Mm -hmm. You're saying Bolt um, is in the film. Mm -hmm. We have all these amazing pieces that before you see it, you're like, okay, something is going on. And then of course, Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith are executive mm -hmm. producers. So there's all these ins. But that's not what is really causing it. What's causing it is when you sit in that seat and you go through that story yes. and come out as a believer and as someone who, who sends the message on. And that is ultimately what we want to do. We want to make films that regardless of who's attached or what's attached, the story is worth it and it moves you on a personal emotional level because then you don't have to sell people on it. They, they're then going to push it. So, yeah. <laughs> that it achieved last night. You have a very, what I consider to be a revolutionary yeah. kind of approach to distribution. Yeah. Is that the right way to put it? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so explain it for us. Well, we have um, recently partnered with Filmrise for distribution of the film in North America. Mm -hmm. And they have integrated into um, our distribution model and into our website, which is sprintofthefilm.com. They've integrated an app called Gather, G-A-T-H-R, right? Mm -hmm. And it is... Um, gather theatrical on demand. And what this means is, you know, when you put out a film in theaters, which is, you know, kind of the ultimate cinematic experience, and yeah. we want as many people to have that experience as possible, typically you target specific markets, like a New York, mm. or, and especially if you're going after diaspora audiences or wherever, you kind of target certain places, you put them in cinemas, you hope it stays mm. there and you hope people show up. Yes. But what Gather does is, you can go into our film website, you can say where you are, you can, it, it can read your location, it tells you which cinemas near to you are showing the film, um, or the film could be shown, mm -hmm. and you can reserve a ticket way out. You can do it a month out, you can reserve tickets right now. And once enough people in that general vicinity reserves and just indicates that they want to see it, you don't have to pay, it just indicates you want to see it, the f film is coming to the cinema near you. So oh. this is not just the typical cities, this is all across America, everywhere. So, I mean, at the moment, so we have a Caribbean film that is gonna be available on over 100 cinema screens in the US and that can absolutely grow as to meet demand as, as that grows. So oh, it's wow. targeted um, theatrical. And, and, it, and how that works better is you're not taking a shot in the dark. It's not a wild guess. You know so there's a group of people in this city that wanna see this, <laughs> so we're sending the film there. Nice. You know? And they just can go to the neighborhood cinema and watch it. All right. Yeah. We get it in May. Yeah. It will be showing in cinemas in Jamaica in May. When for the rest? And what, what, yeah. Roll out the, yeah. the rest of the. Well, the we're, we're continuing to do film festivals across the world. In fact, but our U.S. theatrical release we open in the United States on the 24th of April. So you can, if you're interested in seeing this film, you can go to our website right now and reserve a ticket in your city all across North America. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what we really encourage because. If that happens more, it, it just builds with the film, it expands the film, we can get more cinemas and we can okay. create a real dynamic uh, moment, you know? Mm -hmm. So the 24th of April is when we release there. Um, Jamaica will, shallow, uh, will um, follow shortly after. The UK will also follow shortly after. Mm -hmm. So we are not trying to stagger the film so much. We want to get this film in front of our audience and we want to kind of do it in one general movement. The website? Sprinterthefilm.com. Mm -hmm. and. Everything is in the, on the website. You go there, there's access to our upcoming screenings, um, information on the film, of course, but also you can just get your ticket there. This is a good opportunity with this film to show the power of your voice. What's the biggest hurdle to your next My project? next project? Mm -hmm. A variety of things, but 
every step of the way, you have to solve a problem. You have to okay. be like water. But yeah. for me, it is a business. It's a film business, so you have to find ways to be profitable. You know, it's not something that you're trying to just go out there and make something as you alone are watching in your bedroom. You're making something that can return an investment for your investors can, so that they can come back with you again and, 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 and create more opportunity, you know? So wouldn't you expect that this will crush a lot of those? Yeah, I would hurdles? expect that. And that is definitely what the aim has been. Yes. And I think that is, is happening. I can feel it happening. Well, we feel it last night, Storm. <laughs> so Respect. good to have you. So I felt it last night. I felt that crushing of hurdles for this man to continue to tell Jamaican stories. It happened last night at the Carib Cineplex in Kingston, Jamaica. Okay, and I am appealing to you, my fans. First time I'm asking you to do anything. <laughs> Go see it. And it's not because I'm in it. It's not, okay? All right, so stay with us right here on stage. UK-based producers, fanatics. Mm -hmm. What are they doing in Jamaica? Safari finds the love. You thought you had a queen till you saw mine. Wow. And later, Muta Baruka. I hear the sound, the sound, the sound, the sound, the sound. Listen. Reaching more and more screens around the world every week. On stage, so much more than entertainment. What brings fanatics to Jamaica? And for those who never heard of them, they are best known in the reggae dancehall space as the producers of Stylogy's hit single, Touchdown, featuring Nicki Minaj and Vibes Cartel. Mm -hmm. Dro, C Dot, and Masterpiece. Right now, right here on our stage. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank this is the full, the full group? Thank you. Yes. yes. The full group right here. Mm -hmm. So, okay. All right, so tell us about your mission to Jamaica now. What, what is it, business or are you just here to? It's a bit of both. I mean, we're all um, Jamaican descendants. You know, my father's um, Jamaican and moved to London mm -hmm. um, in his earlier life. Um, we're all, one of our parents at least is Jamaican. Okay. So this is kind of home for us anyway. We, we're frequent visitors and um, we're just out here to, to work and network. We want to help build a further kind of platform for the UK mm -hmm. Jamaica collaboration. And that's for the artists, the producers, everyone. I feel like dance hall can be taken to a next level in our country as well. All right, so who does what in the, in the, in the team? We, we all produce. Sometimes okay. we're all together, like when we done Touchdown, for instance, we were all in the same room. Just everyone had a different section that we did. But um, in general, we can, we can produce separately as well. Let me congratulate you guys for the, that hit single with Thank Stylo. I'm, I'm surprised there isn't a video yet. Yeah. So are we, but um, you know, God willing, it's coming. It's coming. Yeah. It's been worked on. It's been worked on. Because people will have to cross the Atlantic <laughs> to get it done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it'll be good to have everyone in the video as well. Yes. So, you know, we'll see how, how that goes. Okay, so is it part of a wider project for Stylo or just a single? Well, that single was a, it was a joint single with Stylo G and the Fanatics. Yes. Featuring Nicki Minaj and um, Fives. It was just kind of a... We've worked with Stylo from before, like we've done the Yazimi. Um, with mm -hmm. him and Chip, who's another um, UK pioneer of dancehall. Yes. And um, we've done the 10 metric tons that you've done with Beanie Man as well. So um, it was just, we just were in the studio, we'd done a song, and we just said, yeah, let's, let's get it out there. So there was no bigger, wider plan on that front, but we're planning to work more with the artists over here. Is, um, is, is dancehall your only genre or reggae? No, we're very diverse in yes. what we do. Um, I feel we specialize. Our sound is a fusion of dancehall, reggae, and hip hop. Is I guess you could say our, what Touchdown basically is. It's a fusion of those sounds. Mm -hmm. But we do R and B, um, like more commercial pop, uh, as obviously reggae, dancehall, hip hop, Afro beats. Okay. Yeah, so what, the spectrum of what we do is quite diverse. Somebody told me some time ago that the, the street culture of the, U, the UK is the Jamaican culture, is dominating the street 
yeah. the, the, mm -hmm. the street culture of the yeah. of, of yeah. Nanda yeah, the in slang, particular. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah, yeah. I'd say so. the slang definitely, how we speak, like Wagwan, you'll see a Chinese boy walking down the street in England and say Wagwan. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, it's, yeah, that's our, a lot of the Jamaican culture, food wise, everyone knows the, the, our cuisine and everything. So, yeah, it's definitely heavily influenced. Yeah. So, who are the people in, the, in there now? I know Popcorn is measured, <laughs> 12,000 um, at the O2, right? Just after Chronics did 10. And who else? Who else can you tell us about? You know, whoever everyone's kind of switching on to right now is coffee. Yeah. Coffee is yeah. hot. Yeah. Hot, yeah. hot, hot, hot. Yeah. Yeah. Playing oh. on radio every day in London. Definitely. But isn't she in getting rotation on mainstream too? In yeah. mainstream yeah. Yeah. UK? Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. definitely. Okay, so she's on the climb in the yeah, UK. She's on the rise, definitely. Coffee with the coffee with the prime time flow. All right, let's, let's talk about Afrobeat. Because there's an argument that Afrobeat is taking over the reggae love, so to speak. <laughs> For want of a better way to put it, the, the reggae love in the UK is now going over to Afrobeat. Is, is that true? I think there's definitely been an a incline in um, the Afrobeats. But I think there's also, you know, there's, there's the fusion. There's Afrobeats artists that are jumping on reggae and dancehall sounding things and vice versa. Yes. Um, you know, Jamaican or um, dance war is doing songs that have got that kind of rhythm pattern that would you'd liken to Afrobeat. So I think it's a lot of fusion going on, and I think it's I think it's healthy. It's good. Yeah, because I I would I would want to believe that the two are coexisting. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't um, think one's overshadowing the other. Because some people are worried. Some some. Some British are worried that <laughs> <laughs> the good old dancehall stroke reggae mm. is being replaced by Afrobeat. I don't think you could ever replace yeah, it. Nah, there will always, there'll always be a place for... Yeah. No. I think there's a, there's a cycle that, that happens uh, okay. where it seems like, you know, one's kind of getting light and one's not or whatever the case. But yeah, reggae dance always, is just always there. Always gonna so, so Afrobeat is indeed the new hot genre at the moment. Yeah, it's popping. Yeah, it's, it's popping, popping right now. Yeah, yeah, definitely. What can you tell us about your bringing more Jamaicans into your camp? And who 100%. are some of the people you may be looking at? Um, like we mentioned a minute ago, Coffee. Um, there's, who's coffee, that person um, we were checking squash. out yesterday? Yeah, squash. Squash. Yeah, Squash. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Um, J Jada, Jada Kingdom. Kingdom. Yeah. Do you know what? There's so many names that I wouldn't even want to not mention key people that we do want that, but there's, there is a lot of talent over here that's, mm. that we are very interested in working with. All right, so where are you guys taking this, this unit, this business, this company, is it? It's a company, right? Yeah, it's a, it's um, a, it's it's a, a brand. brand. Yeah. It's a brand, right? Yeah. Yeah. Where, are you, where are you taking it to? Around the world. Globally. Around the world. I've created a platform for up-and-coming artists to yes. try and get them on and get them out. You know. and, and so you're, in a sense, the, you're bridging all the, mm. you're putting all the pieces together, the dance, yeah. all the Afrobeat, the, the, um, the, the, the Latin too, I, I suspect, yeah. reggaeton, oh, all of these, yeah. 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 These, these genres, these new genres. All those genres coexist in us, so yes. we can work, like, to me, it would be dope to have an Afro artist, a Latin artist, and a dance mm -hmm. artist all on the same track, yes. doing what they do. And just that, that fusion, again, it will, it will create a, a different wave again. What's your biggest criticism of us in Jamaica? The business of I music in Jamaica. And how, what are some of the, the issues you, you see here? I'm not 100% sure how the infrastructure works here. But in England, for instance, um, there's a lot more focus on the streaming platforms. Like there's, there are, I think the focus here is stage shows. Yes. And live performance, that's the biggest eat, the money. Okay. I think um, external, the streaming platforms, they generate a lot of money, but um, I'm not sure how aware people are of those platforms. Especially with things like PRS. Yeah. In London, we have PRS, which is um, the right. society that collects the money from the radio. Mm -hmm. I think in America, it's called ASCAP. Yes. I'm it's, not sure it's what PRS here in Jamaica, PRS too. as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, we we got it from the British. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So people yes. being savvy on that and being signed up to that and realizing the importance of that because they collect your money worldwide for you. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's a. Very so we need to pay more attention to streaming. Yeah, I think so. 100. Mm -hmm. percent More than the way just that music's being consumed has changed. 
Okay. Before it used to be CDs and all yes, of that. Yes, yes. Now it's just Spotify, like iTunes. Yeah, all the streaming mm. platforms. Hold on. So the, the transition mm. is fully made, and there's money to be made. Yeah, yeah there's and money. And Jamaican artists um, need to be more aware, um, aware of that mm -hmm. and to target these streaming platforms. Yes. Definitely, because so. if you've got a batch of CDs, mm -hmm. you can only physically get them to the people immediately around you. Yes. Putting it online is available to the world all at the same time. You know what I mean? So, the, the, so sometimes, nowadays, we start, <laughs> we're beginning to report the streaming numbers in Jamaica. Who's leading in the streaming? Who's streaming the most record? So that's, that would, that equal money, right? That yeah, means that yeah. that person is making the most money in music. From that from particular platform. From that from platform. platform. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like streams now, a certain amount of streams count as sales. Yes. Mm. So oh, okay. it, it can influence your chart position as well. Yes. Yeah. So, gentlemen, so, yeah. blessed you, love, sir. So good to have you guys Thank on the you. show. Thank you for having Very me. enlightening. I hope my viewers out there have learned something from this. All right, so stay with us. Still to come right here on our stage. <laughs> Safari talks love and drops brand new video. And later, Mutabaruka, Lifetime Achievement Honoree, talks everything from politics to Bujabanta. All coming up. We'll be back. Reaching more and more screens around the world every week. On stage, so much more than entertainment. The last time Safari was on our stage, he expressed a desire to be a father and wants his kids to be born and raised in Jamaica. Well, soon to be married, Safari is now in Jamaica. Could the first child be on the way? The Love and Hip Hop International Star is on our stage right now with his latest music project. Safari, sir. Yo. Blessed love. You Respect. Running? We saw you recently working in my capacity, <laughs> you were on the other side of the camera. It was rough. And you were working the arrival at the Butcher concert. Yeah. How, how was that for you, that experience? Is that something you're onto now, you're into? You know what? I appreciated the experience. It was a great experience, but when it comes to me like interviewing or trying to talk to other people, I, I definitely don't think that's my forte. Okay. I'm used to people talking to me and asking me the questions. So for it to be vice versa, and especially with all the people who's trying to interview me while I'm interviewing them, it doesn't make it an easy job. So was it incidental, or were you here for that? No, I was definitely here for that, you know what I'm saying? So big up to Press K, she had set it up for me, and honestly, I'm not gonna lie, when I did get here, I didn't know that's what I was doing. She just said, yo, I got you doing something, boom, boom. I'm like, yo, whatever. I'm gonna come, and I ended up hosting the carpet, mm. Because I, I thought you were here to, for baby making. You were here to make baby. You know, you know the breeding process is, that's a 24-7 job. So I was definitely here for that also. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I, I'm a man of my so, word. So you had to conceive. <laughs> the child was conceived, born, and raised. Conceived, <laughs> born, and raised, yes. You know, let, let, let him or her have their first five to seven years on this amazing island. And we're saying you found love, right? So mm -hmm. she's with you now. Yeah, you know, it, it was right under my nose all along. She's right here. Come here for a second. Let the people see you. Whoa. Step up. Whoa, yes. OK. I, I have not Believe me, I have met her. Yes, come. I just saw What's this side? You beautiful you lady you wanna, sitting you in the studio. Yeah. I didn't know that she's actually the one. Yeah. Hi, nice to meet you. Good. Could somebody bring her a chair for me? All right, so you're all set now and can talk to us. So tell us your name, because he hasn't even introduced you to us. <laughs> and I want our viewers to know that what you saw is actually what happened. <laughs> okay, so your name is? Erica Mena. Oh, do you want to do the honor, sir? You want to take <laughs> it back and do the honor? Does she, you know, she needs no introduction. Okay, so are you Jamaican, American? Mm -mm, what's Puerto your name? Dominican. Oh, okay, yeah. so you're based in the US? No? Born and raised in New York, yeah. But she is Jamaican by association of Bounty Killer music. 
Oh, really? Yes. I'm a big bouncy. So you you didn't fan. bring her into that? No. Yo, it's not me. Like, because you're that, a big fan of the warlord. That's what I'm saying. And so that's what, like, like for it to connect like this, this is just destiny and just... Oh, yeah? I've just God. always been inspired by the Jamaican culture. I feel like Jamaican women are sassy. They're very, you know. So how did you... They take domination. <laughs> where did you discover the killer's music? New York City. In, in New York, yeah. okay. okay. So, so you, Jamaican, the culture, the dancing, you know, I was kind of like brought up with that. So you're planning to relocate to Jamaica then? Those are his, his dreams eventually. Yeah, yeah it's going to happen because right now I'm here... And we're supposed to be leaving soon, and I'm sitting here asking her, like, yo, why, <laughs> why are we, we have to go back? Why are we leaving? I'm trying to think. What we got to go back for? Yeah, yeah because it. if you're going to have to conceive, and, <laughs> and if the child or children will be born in Jamaica and raised there, sounds like you're Jamaican already. Pretty much. <laughs> so he's Jamaican by, by the food, too. Yeah, I love by it. By the food and the red stripe and, and, the, <laughs> and the sorrel um. What is it? Is it the sour red stripe? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the sour red stripe. So no babies on the way yet, officially. You don't know yet. You don't want to disclose Does that. it look Because everybody, everybody swear I we... I just got thicker. I'm happy. So people think I'm pregnant. Oh. I just gained a little. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> just a little. <laughs> All right, sir. So talk about career for me. Are you working otherwise in Jamaica at the moment? Right now, it's beer work I'm doing. You know, I've been recording. I've been shooting videos um brand new smash single called no regular girl yes it's dropping so what uh, music is your full-time work at the moment music music is what music pays me <laughs> doing shows and, and showing up to clubs to, to, to perform my music music is my passion and that's what's at the forefront the tv thing that's like a. but you started doing acting too yeah, and now I'm in the hole. You see, that's why it's good she's here. Cause I be, I just shot a movie too. Yeah, I just shot two movies while He's I was like transitioning out of the TV to more movies and. Yeah, I just shot a Christmas movie in Atlanta mm -hmm. called Hip Hop Holiday. Okay, Vicky. and that will be out for Christmas this, this Christmas? Christmas this year. Yeah. So and so, who are the people you're recording with in Jamaica? Um, I just my new single called No Regular Girl. It's me and Jamil. Mm -hmm. This tune, I'm telling you. Jamil, yes. Yes, just, just remember. Great artist. It's, 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 about to, it's about to take over, and not just in Jamaica. It's going to take over all across. And it's produced by Jordan. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was, I've been a fan of Jamil for a minute, and I DM'd him on Twitter one day, and I was like, yo, you have a, a large female following. I said, so do I. I really think it would make sense for us to do this. Okay. He, 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 him and Jordan, they connected. They, they made the beat. He did the hook. He sent it to me. I did my verses. I said, yo, we need to shoot this video right away. Mm -hmm. So when I was, knew I was coming here for the Buju show, I said, yo, let's shoot this video. So I spent four or five days in a crazy house in Montego Bay, a spot called Destiny Villa, and the, the, the video is it's just one big dream and one big fantasy of me looking at a hot woman that I've wanted and lusted for for so long. And I'm just looking at her like, wow, I can't believe you're in front of me. You're no regular girl, but you're my dream girl. And <laughs> everything here going forward is going to be a fantasy. And she's and, reality now. Yes. And now right here on our stage. Yes. <laughs> and the stage. video is also a reality. Yes, it is. Well, let's go to the video right now. Yeah. My girl in a regular girl. In a regular. I woke up to her like this. Yeah, look, is she all mine? You thought you had a queen till you saw mine. All right, there you have it. No <laughs> regular girl. <laughs> well, you know, she's also real, and she's on our stage with the man right now. I can understand now, sir, why, why you're so excited. Mm. Um, <laughs> the, the video is good, but the yeah. girl makes it even better. That's what I'm saying. It's like the song is doing the well. Song the song is amazing. Good. I want to give a big shout out to... My favorite director on earth from London, Jay Popworth. Yes. It was me and him. We connected. He's been doing all my videos for forever. And, you know, he came back out here, got the house set up, and we made this masterpiece. Yo, listen, remember, this video right here and this song is about to take over. And Jamil, spring and working summer. with Jamil. Jamil, yo, Jamil, you, he's so ill to me. Like, his, his, his swag, his demeanor, I just love how he moves. He's a hard worker. He don't waste no time. If you say he's going to do something, he do it. 
And, you know, he, he, he was a big part of it. So I couldn't have did it without him, him and Jordan. And you, you're, you're, <laughs> you're ruling that I video. for the visual. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's the visual and the inspiration to the whole record. Yeah. Like my verses, you know, I have just thinking about, you know, stuff for her. And <laughs> That's a reality in there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you took time out as well to do some charity work in Montego Bay. Yes, yes. My old parish in Hanover. And oh, Hanover. Okay. Yeah. So in Pondside, where, right where my house is at, like a couple, probably less than a half a mile, mm. the Merlin Ati um, High School is there. So I went over there, and it's so crazy. I just pulled up. I didn't call no one. I didn't speak to nobody. I just pulled up in the bus, and I said, um, we want to talk to the principal, you know? And we, she was there, and she welcomed us with open arms, and she gave us a tour of the school, and she showed us what they need, the computers and the, um, the music program. They don't really have too much stuff there. So I said, you know what? I said, I really want to come on board. I really want to help get a new computers for the school and, oh, nice. and get a music program and just have it really set up nice. Wow. Mm -hmm. so, so that will be affected when? Well, we just connected, so now it's all about setting it up and just making sure everything is right and that nobody is going to tax me to send the computers <laughs> and all of that other stuff into mm -hmm. Jamaica. The kids, you know, a little bit more on track with school and it makes school exciting. Okay. That's what, you know... I remember growing up as a kid being important when you had those programs and able to, you know, explore your talents. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Makes you want to go to school more, you know, so. Okay, so in all the, rom the romantic stuff and, and all that, you took some time out to show some Yeah, I had to, to some take kids. a break from trying Appreciate to. Appreciate it, sir. Yeah. Thanks on behalf <laughs> of the school, the community, and everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are we invited to the wedding? When is the wedding, by the way? <laughs> so this is what I want to do, because mm -hmm. I want to do a wedding in Jamaica. Oh. But, you know, it, it definitely may be too much, but we're probably going to have to have two weddings, because I want to do one in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. yeah. you're, you're definitely going to come. I'm going to probably have you. Gonna, you're going to host it. I'm going to have you host a coffee at the wedding. I'm going to have you host a baby shower and all that. Like you're definitely invited. Make it a I don't know about that, man. But we'll accept the inv invitation and see if we can come, come take a, a quiet Sit in the back and watch Ragua. Yeah. How is that? I'll let, I'll let on stage cameras be there. All right. Oh, that's, that's even Every, better. Everybody's trying to be there, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, the mother people, we are, they might prepare. All right, All right sir. All right. Well, <laughs> viewers, you're here. Right here on our stage, the promise. Listen, the way I'm they not going to say too it much, away. but the way I'm coming down the aisle, <laughs> I'm not coming down the aisle with like nothing regular. She ain't coming down like no regular girl. Everything about this is going to be crazy. Well, we have seen signs of it already. <laughs> wow. All right. Thanks again, sir. Yo, good to see you. So good to meet you. So good to meet you. Bless you. Straight. <laughs> All right. So Make sure y'all go download No Regular Girl on everything right now. Go watch the video. <laughs> tell a friend to tell a friend. Share it and all of that. All right? And subscribe to our YouTube channel. She's crazy. I'm not. All right. There you have them right here on, on our stage. <laughs> The Safaris. The Safaris. Wow, that sounds like yes. the name of a show. The Safaris. <laughs> All right, stay with us. Up next, Muta Baruka on our show. Reaching more and more screens around the world every week. On stage, so much more than entertainment. Lifetime Achievement Honors to Muta Baruka. The legendary dub poet and media personality is on our stage right now to deliver his acceptance speech to you in the flesh and perhaps answer a few questions on some Jamaican current affairs. Right now, right here on our stage, Muta Baruka. Great, yes, sir. man, sir. Yeah, Congratulations, yeah, sir. sir. Thank you, man. Well deserved, um, Muta. That's what I am told. That's what you're told. Okay. What do you feel about it, though? Well, given what we have done over the, past, over the years, mm -hmm. uh, and given that we have seen the contribution that it has made to the culture, to Africa, yes. and to especially young people, Yes. because one would not know that after 27 years on the radio and doing poetry for more than 30 years, 
Yes. We have a big following of young people that is listening to us. Absolutely. And isn't it for your entire body of work? Not just you work at no, IRA FM because... Cause was a port, I'm a poet before I go to IRA. Yes. But what IRA does is to transform me into a, what we call a radio personality. Uh, uh, and that reach a lot of people. Yes. You know, if, you, if you're talking to several thousand people per night, it's more than a state show. <laughs> Absolutely, any yeah. night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and so we must commend IRFM, Reggae Radio IRFM. Yes. Big up, big up, big up, enough big ups for this. I am the third recipient, actually. Jimmy Cliff was the first. Yes. And Bonnie Wheeler was last year. And Same. This year is my year. So we can see that they are really looking into the achievements of Jamaican cultural um, ambassadors. Oh, yes. What are some of your proudest moments? In your work, Muta, what are some of the things you're most proud of? Proud of when we just started, especially on the radio, when we just started out, parents didn't want them children to listen to me. Mm. You know, I cannot recall a lot of students telling me that them people used to beat them because they might listen to the madman. Yes. And the proudest thing now is that these children has grown to be university students in foreign countries. And when they go to these universities, the same thing that they heard me saying when they was young is the same thing they hear them professors saying. So guess what now? They send for me to speak at the university. So a lot of time when we go to the university that speak, it's a lot of Jamaican community in these universities who say, well, remember that bridge in the name of the used to talk the same thing I said, I could send for him that thing can't expound on it. So that is, that is really an achievement in itself. Wow. So the madman... Yeah, you know what I mean? Really. Isn't, wasn't I mean, the man after that, all? You know, Rasta man, you know, things that Rasta used to say then, and what we see happening now is a total different transformation. Yes, but there is something that I wanted to speak on for me, because prior to your coming, I don't recall anyone else apart from Miss Lou, mm. who would come to radio or, to, or media in Jamaica and speak the dialect, yeah, to speak the, the way you talk all the time. Yeah, yeah. And you, you, Muta, more than anybody in my mind, yeah. did more to change that than anybody else. That's who you're young. <laughs> no, man. <laughs> it's not that. that most, most young people, as I said, we have a big following of young people. Most young people who hear me believe that this is the first time they never hear what you say. Yes. You know, which is true. It's the first time they hear it. Plus, they hear me on the radio talking about certain things. It's the first time I hear people attack them things up on radio. Yes, absolutely, you know, so. because you were as real as you are in, yes. the, in real life. No yes. change, no, 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 no pretty up. What you see is what you get. And some people are grappling with a, a good command of the English language. Yes. And you know better with that. No, I was just no. talking to some youngsters um, this week because there's this debate about Reagan King and... Uh, a mistake uh, that he made about many fell mistakes, out of school. Many mistakes. Um, <laughs> many mistakes. And I was saying to them, you know, that if perhaps if we just forget about the the um, the verb yeah, subject to be agreement and these things, yeah. and just to reason based on your own yeah, I think, intellect. I, I think a lot of people believe that you can't bring across certain intellectual reasoning yes. unless you talk in the in the English language uh, and oh, not in our absolutely. language. You know, but I find that it, it is more beautiful when you talk on the radio, like how Jamaican people talk, yes. except because they bother them. But yes. you just talk normal. And it's, all right, you ever listen, when people say the, 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 the parliament, they turn off them radio. Yes. Because the parliament here and them attack in the Queen's way and the Queen's this and the Queen's that. Yet still now, when an artist come talk, yes. Everybody at the radio said, listen to this, listen to that on the radio, because you might use the language of the people to express the feelings and the behavior of the people. Yes. So you think that Ragin King should have been corrected? Some people said we should have corrected him. Would that yeah, be appropriate? Maybe it would embarrass the of situation. But yeah. some serious mistake there were. It really did So, so you, you that think... I, that I, that I know. Yes. Speaking Jamaican language, you know. That is just a misrepresentation of what he's supposed to say because he's not literate enough. Yes. yes. So uh, do you think he should stay with the patois? 
or he should just he should try to learn more English. Yeah, yeah because anytime you Jamaican try to talk something that them is not them sound stupid. Me learned that from my wife already. That yeah. she said, look at don't try put on nothing because anytime you start to call the world where it's not supposed to be. <laughs> you, 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 the, the, the understanding. It's distracting and what, from what you're saying. Yeah, and that is really where I'm to the brethren. Yes. The brethren are talk somewhere where that it's unbelievable. I mean, it makes him look a weird, man. But wouldn't you say there are bright, bright Jamaicans who ca cannot articulate in English? Well, you know, you see the language that we speak? Yes. We cannot read it or write it. And the language that we write, we cannot speak it. Yes. You see, and this is really the dilemma of Jamaican people where we write a language that we cannot speak and we speak a language that we cannot write. Most people can't read a Mislu poem. Mm -hmm. You know, they will read a Shakespeare poem and not even a Shakespeare, but a modern day poet. But most people talk a certain way. Yes. And that is really what we should have stick to. We must understand the language still, you know, the English. Absolutely, we don't say yeah. we have a show with the English language. Understand the English language, but when we have communicate, to Jamaican especially, yeah. there was a time when we go foreign and people said, they move talk. When, when you go foreign, they understand you. We say, I don't care, you know. <laughs> because I don't know how to put my poetry to them to make a German man understand it in an English language. Him himself can ever talk English himself. Yes. And now we see everybody I try to talk in the Jamaican like language. Jamaican. And yes. they understand what we are saying. No care where you're going in the world now. So it's not a push against English language? No, it's, uh, it's understanding that what we have is us. And if we don't feel like so what we are doing, it's chat bad. Because that's what they give it. It's chat bad. You can't chat bad. No. Just like how you can't cuss a bad word. It's about communicating. Yes. When you started out, Muta, did you ever think you could be this um, respected and celebrated in Jamaica? But I never start out with nothing in mind, you know. Yes. I just I write my poem them because there was a f inner feeling. In them days, there was black power. Mm -hmm. And Marcus Garvey was one of my teachers in school. Marcus Garvey Jr. And Laxley Comrie. Everybody knows Laxley Comrie from Boystone, really. And Mark, uh, Mom, Amy Jakes Gavi, who was Marcus Gavi's wife, who used to go to our house. So at those days, as a youth, we are coming up with the black power thing, and we have certain thinking, mm -hmm. how we match down the system, but we have to do something else. You know what I'm saying? The pen is mightier than the sword. <laughs> so we just use the pen and work it out. I never write to say, to go become some international poet, international artist. Mm -hmm. I remember when I used to write on my mother's yard. When I did not leave my work, and I said, why I go home now? She said, I'm a success to old school. The boss tell me I'm bad when I left the work, and I'm going to tell me I'm a success to old school. My, that, my mother come in at the, the house, the room at night time, and see me type. Yeah. And she said, I'm going to turn off her light because poetry can't pay a light bill. Same. And I know mean, no, over the years, my poetry pay more than light bills, you know, <laughs> you know <laughs> until she died. Uh, yeah. you know, so, so. Yeah, we never understand. We never know if it's going to You were super brave, Mota, because you were, you decided to go barefooted. You've decided to speak the way you want to speak. We never go barefoot, you know. We never put on our shoes. We never go barefoot, no barefoot. Your foot, I say, barefoot. It's like something we can't take off. We can't take off my barefoot. It's my foot. You know, it's not no barefoot. So I never tried to go barefoot. I was always barefoot. I, was, I, I decided I will not wear that's, shoes. That's how much you are yourself, sir. You're always yourself. This is not like it. You know, this is Mota. <laughs> Okay, man, but, but, you know, so you, you're always, you didn't feel the need to be anyone else but yourself. No, just me, yes. All the time, anywhere on the planet. Rasta said he, he, tell the man true. himself abroad, no? See when you go abroad, it, nothing, absolutely nothing changed. Then you know, see my man? Yeah. Then I go to France, go to Africa. <laughs> this is the last time I come in here, I go to, the other day I'm in England. Yeah. I'm there in a, um, Camden Market, and my brethren post a video on it, and I tell you, say, Mm. Everybody, when we see the coming, I'm going to say, what we say, we really don't have no shoes in that cold. I think cold are the same thing, still, you know. I think cold are the same thing. You really are looking to see if you. They really are look. Yeah, if you find out if we really are. Because England, you know, first of all, they must say foreign. But yeah. then now, the cold part coming in, yeah. you know. So it's not only, I can't say if we really got foreign without shoes. I can't say if we really not the cold without shoes. 
You know, that you see me. Yes. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. But, but man, sing song about them too. You know, you have a whole heap of artists. Mm -hmm. Sing song. Yeah. I, yeah, a lot of them use it in, 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 in especially yeah. dance art. Yeah. Which brings me to another question. Because the other day you, you said something that, that I found to be so valuable. When you took the moment at Rebel Salute, right, to say to Bobby Wine. Oh, Bobby Wine, yes. yes you yes. know, that you use that moment to say, to send a message, to remind us in Jamaica about the responsibility of the that we have yes, yes. as artists yes. when, we, when we say certain things in music. Because the, the man was inspired by Jamaica's music. Yes. Let me play the clip. You have some dancehall artists wrong. We have to tell you, say, the music now influence nobody. Are the parents supposed to do it? Watch a man. I'm madly soon I talk about you know. Because which part the parents falter? It is this village that must represent that family structure. So we can't do that our music now. Then if music never influence somebody, oh Bob Marley is so popular all over the world. How did people respond to you saying that? Because I found it to be so profound and so important. Well, in you that know, moment. sometimes you say things and it's what people are not in mind. Mm -hmm. And don't want to say it because I'm afraid of repercussions. Yes. You see? Yes. So, me not afraid of repercussions. Clearly. Yeah, we're back. <laughs> <laughs> we don't afraid of repercussions. <laughs> we're coming from the school of Marcus Gavi and Marco Mix and Stokely and Michael and all these people, you know. So, mm -hmm. me not really cater for soft things and say, boy, well, right, or you can't say certain things because you're afraid, say, boy, well, you're going to lose your work. It seems to me that the opposite is happening to you. Because right. people now are respecting your realness. Yes. And yes. are accepting you for who you are because yes. you will call out even your friend them. Even people you support if them wrong and call them out, isn't yes, it? Yes, of course. Because I mean, certain politicians are good. I mean, me like her very much. Yes. But she always complains, say, boy, I'm cut her too hard sometimes, but she still love me. <laughs> Even the other day, she said, I'm a hard thing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but you say, it's so you have to do it. The poet and the journalist is not supposed to be satisfied with something that the politician is supposed to do, mm -hmm. because I'm getting paid to do it. You must deal with the things that I'm supposed to do, and I'm not doing. We have to be the conscience and the consciousness of the people. We have to, all the while, that is really the purpose of a poet. Ganja, where is it now? Is it progressing in the, in the right direction? Yeah, it's progressing yeah. in the right direction. Yeah, man, yeah, man. I mean, you see, say, it a move slow. I don't like what the Minister of Culture said the other day, though. Mm. Say, if, because of America, it's again, you know, this is America thing, you know. Because of the American situation, you know, it might call for less THC in the ganja and more CDB. Okay. In the ganja, and I said, but why? Because of the Americans, mm. you see. So there's a certain amount of THC that them recognize. And me, I said, but we did a part of the ganja all the while. Why you want to satisfy America now when America a licked on all of the wall them? Even mm. though Trump a try build, Trump a try build up some. America licked down all of the ganja wall them. Mm -hmm. And you know who knows that Jamaica the best ganja. I come make we satisfy American. They're taste. commercializing it. No, you're, you're you're designing yeah, no, no, it to suit no, 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 no. the taste of the Americans. Yeah, we can't. why we do that? Because first time we couldn't use the ganja, but and we can't export the ganja. Remember when they used to charge here Jamaica playing them for ganja? Yeah. No, we are saying no. All right, so they accept the ganja now. No, we are thinking of mine. Say, boy, maybe them now go accept it. They talk too much THC night and all them. It's a joke business. These people love to compromise things too much. Bojo. Yes. What nice is, show, man. Wonderful. Great show. Beautiful, man. Beautiful. Do you think he should apologize to anybody? Look, yeah, I don't think nothing, you know. You see, if he won't apologize, he apologize. Yes. I don't think nothing. I see, say the youth, pass that. Hmm. Some guys, you know, I don't know if I have enough time to tell you this little story. This little story where two, two sages are walk. Hmm. I go across a river. And them see a woman walk across the river. But for the religion, tell them that they must touch woman. Mm -hmm. So the two of them turn up there. One of the see them take up the woman and carry her across and put her over the other side. The one who never took up the woman said, Look upon the one who took up the woman and said, Tell me something. We religion say so we must touch woman. Mm -hmm. How come you hold on for the woman? So the one who took up the woman said, Look here. 
I left the woman at the river a long time. I used to like carry her. So you must know now it's the same thing now with, with these gay, gay guys and Bucho. Yeah. Bucho left that long time. Yeah. And them still are carry it with them. Mm. So it's, it's, it's crazy. But if you apologize, I apologize. I'm not against me for my apologize. But some want him to apologize for the, uh, the conviction. You mean to Jamaican people? Yeah. But that's a different thing now because, yeah, in a way, it is a really necessity. Because given that we didn't really, Jamaican people didn't hold on for him, so it's like a, a, a father disappointed them children. So maybe him deserve to say, why right now, Jamaican people, you know, we do this thing here about you and now. By God, by God, that's how it go, and we just continue the journey. That don't take nothing out of him. Okay. The people they would have still love it. So, Jamaican people rapping in a prisoner pe artists who go to prison door. That's what I know. There is a thing about Jamaicans. If them artists got jail, whether them they do the crime or not, them just say, yes, I'm my artist that and mm -hmm. you know and, and get props bigger, 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 bigger. <laughs> we, we easy forget still, which is some uh, some of the time you wonder, oh we are think for that and not think for something else. You know, it's weird. Said. Well sir Muta. As usual, sir, we're happy to have you. Yeah, man. The you... last time I was in here was when we were going to Africa. Ah. So, so, well, just in case our viewers are wondering, there's no big trip planned now, but who knows? You saw your thing. <laughs> <laughs> I should never tell you. <laughs> Never <laughs> tell me yet. <laughs> no, well, right. open. Ghana, Ghana of the year of return. Yeah. July to August, big things. Everybody are going on there, so. Oh, who knows? Wait for me. Them not tell me yet. Your boss will call you, man. <laughs> don't worry. We have a room, sir. Time. Congrats time. again, sir. Yeah, man. Give time. And give time. walk good and, yeah. and continue to come on our stage and share with us your thoughts. Yeah, man. Sir. All right. Thank you so much. Well, there you have it, our show for this week. Winford Williams, on behalf of all of us, thanking you for joining us. Do join us again next week for more on stage. All right. Thanks for watching our video. You know what to do. Click subscribe and be on our stage always.